Let's bring in Nina Easton, senior editor and columnist at Fortune Magazine. Jonah Goldberg is senior editor at National Review. Both are Fox News contributors. She has not, Nina, gone the traditional path of forming an exploratory committee before you announce that you're actually running. Why not? Why, John, there's not much to explore. She's running. And I think what we're seeing, even though as we, you see in that piece that she's in a cramped midtown Manhattan headquarters, what we're, we've seen in the last few weeks is her incredible operational advantage over this crowded field of Republican candidates. So she doesn't have to vie for talent with anybody. She's, uh, she's uh, picked off John Podesta, Jen Palmieri from the White House. She's got the campaign whiz from the Obama campaign, Jim Seen is already running a super PAC, and then she doesn't have to compete for dollars. Uh, so it's just it's an incredible advantage that she's going to start off with. Is anybody on the Democratic side, Jonah, going to be able to compete with that? Uh, probably not. I mean, I, I think there it's conceivable. You can imagine, you know, is if, if Elizabeth Warren ran, ran, which I don't think she will, um, that would really upset Hillary's narrative because they are trying to front load this as an argument that the country needs a woman and she's the only one who qualifies as a woman you wait a minute you're, you're treading the... you're treading into that dangerous territory that the clinton campaign has said it does not want people to to focus on uh... well come on but that's a lie uh... <laughs> the the simple fact the whole argument about ready for hillary the the talking points we heard from harry reid recently about how her chief qualification is that she's a woman i mean the benefit of harry reid is that he's not sophisticated enough to hide the spin in a clever way so you can actually figure out what the talking points are um, and I, I agree with Nina entirely about about the, the advantages but those advantages come with disadvantages there is a vast sprawling you might call it a Clinton industrial uh, complex out there um, with all sorts of internal factions, a massive bureaucracy of rent seekers and remoras and, and, and hangers on, and that is going to be a very difficult thing to manage. The friends of Hillary, the friends of Bill, and all the rest. And having some real competition might impose a kind of discipline earlier on that they would that would come in handy down the road. Yeah, what well, one wonders, yeah. Nina, whether you know this this campaign organization that she's about to build or about to launch is going to have so many moving parts it, it could be this big lumbering creature that that might not be nimble enough to react to you know changes in uh, world events and and changes yeah. in the campaign dynamic well that was certainly the her problem as we recall in 2007 and 2008 and that's why barack obama was basically able to end run her because she had this big lumbering campaign um, but i think this time around it's totally different because she doesn't have a real contender uh, in the Democratic primary. So, uh, and the other thing is that she's actually miss, had missteps before she set up a campaign. So the campaign at least will provide more mi uh, message discipline from the from the get go. I'm not saying that there aren't. She doesn't have issues and she's not going to have problems, but she's not going to come out that with that bruised, battered, um, you know, she's not going to come out bruised and battered out, out of a bad primary, which I think inevitably uh, the Republican candidate is going to come out of. It's, you know, we look back at, at 2012 where Mitt Romney came out, just broke, bruised and battered. And uh, I think we're going to likely see the same thing again. Hillary supporters, Jonah, say that she has not been badly hurt by the email mail scandal and yet her poll numbers have dropped and it's it's roughly in confluence with the revelations about the fact that she was using her own private email at the at the state department and then destroyed those uh, those emails uh, how big an issue is that going to be in the campaign do you think um, you know it, it's actually hard to tease this out because I mean a lot of us were saying from the beginning that her high poll numbers as secretary of state were unnatural because she was actually just simply outside of politics. And anyone who's outside of politics at a time when Washington and politics are so unpopular is going to benefit. She seemed above partisan politics. Now that she's getting back in partisan politics, as predicted, her poll numbers are dropping. Some of that clearly has to do with the email and the erase server and all of that. How much, we don't know. But she's an inherently polarizing figure. And the more people are reminded that she's polarizing, the more her poll numbers are going to go down. It's also just worth remembering She's not a good politician. She might be a good tactician. She might be a good lawyer. She might be a good strategist. She's a very mediocre, at best, retail politician. And just because her name is Clinton doesn't mean she's a fraction as, a good, as good 
as her husband was on the stump doing retail politics. She's not quick on her feet the way a lot of the Republicans will be, and certainly the, anyone who survives the you know the 16-man steel cage match that the primaries are going to be. And imagine her her slogan, Nina. I mean, what does she point to um, during her time as Secretary of State, I suppose, or maybe as a New York senator? What does she point to as her accomplishment uh, that that qualifies her to be president? Well, that's going to be, I think, the great conundrum for her in a general election is is the is the world world is more dangerous now. Um, she hasn't been she wasn't running the State Department when it completely crumbled, particularly in the Middle East. Uh, but we've seen where she's tried to distance herself from the White House, for example, saying um, that she argued along with Leon Panetta and David Petraeus to intervene in Syria early on in 2012. And the president uh, didn't do that. That, of course, created this this mess in Syria, a void mm -hmm. that was filled by ISIS and leaves us in this dangerous situation now. So she has to find ways to say, you know, to, to, to both um, say that she's a, a veteran of the foreign stage, but also to distance herself from the worst parts of the, the uh, Obama foreign policy. President Obama has said he will campaign for her. Uh, yeah. Is that going to help, Jonah? Uh, it certainly will help in certain places. It will certainly help raising money. Um, it'll definitely help in essentially blue states. But it ra does raise the issue of, the president's, the incumbent president's popularity matters a great deal when there is a candidate trying to replace of the same party. Mm. George Bush, George Bush's low approval ratings in 2008 were a just a lead albatross around John McCain's neck. That's the way it always works. If Barack Obama's approval ratings are only in the low 40s or even the high 30s or anything like that, it is very difficult for any Democrat to to come in because basically the election is in some part a referendum on the democrats and that's the historical trend expect that hillary clinton announcement sometime we are told in the next couple of weeks jonah goldberg nina easton thank you